All right, so I wanted to do a quick video on frequency, which relates to alternating current, obviously, and direct current, you don't have frequency, but this is one of the most misunderstood portions of electrical theory, and I really don't even want to do theory. Um, instead, I want to talk about the practical side of this and, and kind of being able to hopefully, by the end of this short video, kind of get a vision of what's going on when we talk about alternating current, when you see things like a sine wave. I, I was sharing some images of an oscilloscope and to show compressor starting and capacitors and, and and a lot of people, you know, responded back that that they were having a hard time even understanding what they were seeing. So I thought, well, it might be useful to have some of this knowledge and it might give you a better picture in your head. And uh, I did a lot of training on this in Haiti with little kids and I found some metaphors that I think work pretty good. And uh, it's actually helped clarify some of it in my mind as well. So let's start with this. You've, you've all seen a sine wave that looks like this, you know, kind of goes up and down like this. And maybe you're, you're confused about what that means. You know, electricity is going back and forth or up and down. But truthfully, the, well, the way this really works is, is that it's being generated in a rotational magnetic field. So when we talk about electromagnetism, electromagnetism is, is a way of essentially explaining that electricity and magnetism are related. So magnetism can generate current flow, electron flow, and electron flow can create magnetism. When we talk about things like radio waves or microwaves or whatever, we'll just call it called electromagnetic field because they're, they're so closely related to each other. But when we talk you know, about generating electricity in an alternating sine wave like this, what we're really doing is we're, we're spinning an electromagnet and that electromagnetic field that's spinning is generating electricity without going into, you know, the theory of generators and all that. It's just, you know, it's, it's, it's important to kind of know this, that it's a rotational field and that rotational field represented on a timeline. So if you take this and you stretch it out in time, you know, left to right, represents time here, that circle then becomes this sine wave. Instead of being a circle that's kind of continuously going around, it becomes this sine wave because it's on a timeline. So this circle is this sine wave. And for me, as soon as I started thinking of electromagnetism or alternating current as a rotational field, that made it a lot easier for me to sort of understand what I'm seeing when I'm looking at a sine wave. So this is an image that we created for our Haiti training, and we had it all the words, of course, were translated into Haitian Creole. But I, I think this is a really good way of thinking about this because when you think about kids using a jump rope, they're not just moving their arm up and down, although they, you know, they could be in this case, they could just be moving it up and down. But if you think of a traditional jump rope, you're spinning it. And as you're spinning it, if you were to look at it from the side, you wouldn't see the spinning, you would just see it going up and down. And you would think, oh, okay, it's just going up and down. But in reality, when kids are using a jump rope, and they're rotating their hand, it creates this sort of shape, but it's happening in a rotational way. And, and that, for me, is a good way to envision a sine wave, thinking of it more in 3D, like using a jump rope and how that creates that up and down. Now, again, that's a metaphor. It's not perfect, but it's a good way for me to think about it. And if they move, in this case, if you think of it just like they're moving their hands up and down, if they do it sl more slowly then the wavelength is longer. So lower frequency is going to create a longer wavelength. And if they do it more rapidly, then the wavelength is going to shorten. So the distance between the waves is going to shorten because the frequency increases. So they're doing it more frequently, which shortens the wavelengths. And if you, you know, put time in there, you're going to have more peaks and valleys per time unit. So per second, per minute, whatever. So when you think of, you know, 60 hertz, for example, that's 60 cycles per second. That's what we see in the US and in Europe and other places, you see 50 hertz. And so if you have more cycles, more circles, more times that that motor goes around or that uh, generator, I should say, moves around, then that shortens the frequency and also increases the wavelength. So wavelength is more something that we talk about in electromagnetics, you know, radio waves, microwaves, gamma waves, all those sorts of things that actually travel through the air. But even in electricity, we can think of wavelength. If you're working on a variable frequency drive, for example, and you were tracking it on an oscilloscope, if as the frequency goes up, the wavelength, the distance between the waves is going to shorten. And so that's a higher frequency. Higher frequency is also a shorter wavelength and a lower frequency is a longer wavelength. This applies to things like, like we talked about, electricity, electromagnetic waves that go through the air. And then also it applies to sound waves. So we see this in sound, even in audio recording. If on I, when we edit audio, when you look at lower wavelengths, those are the, the deeper, more bassy sounds. And then the higher pitch sounds are 
closer together wavelengths, but it all comes down to frequency. How frequently does it go up and down? Or more accurately, how frequently does it rotate uh, when we're talking about electrical generation? To me, that's a good way of thinking about that and using this sort of metaphor of either kids jumping rope or them kind of shaking a rope up and down in between their hands. It, to me, it just helped clarify a lot of that. That may be something you can use for yourself or maybe when you're educating somebody. And then also, I want to just talk a little bit about electromagnetics. I think it's, it's kind of cool that when we think of frequency, you know, frequency exists in nature too. The longer a wavelength, the more it's the, the things that we deal with like radio waves. And then as you go up into the higher and higher frequencies, you get into microwaves, infrared, and then visible light is just in this very, very fine bandwidth of frequency. And then you go into x-rays and other things, but they're all really the same thing. They're all electromagnetism. What uh, distinguishes them from each other is that bandwidth. You know, we talk about bandwidth or we talk about, you know, maybe tuning in a radio or tuning in an old school television. Again, these are analog signals. These aren't digital. You know, digital is completely different, but old school analog signals, you were really tuning into a resonant frequency. So if you think about, you know, tuning an old school radio like this one, you're literally tuning that radio to the same frequency in megahertz. And again, that's a much, much higher frequency than what we see. Electricity is 60 hertz, so 60 cycles per second, where this is 100. For example, what we have tuned in here, I think it's 100,000 hertz. So like, I think this would be I think a megahertz is a thousand. So I think this would be a hundred thousand cycles. I'm not going to even try to edit this out because the fact is it doesn't matter to HVAC, but it's much, much higher frequency. And when we tune in our radio to that frequency, we are, we're, we're resonating with that frequency. And so then it starts, it plays out of our, out of our radio. It's really interesting when you think about it, how things like light and radio waves and microwaves and all these things are all really the same basic thing. It's, it's electromagnetic energy but it's just tuned to different frequencies. So we use frequency in so many different ways. I think it's kind of cool, just a cool little thing to know, and it kind of helps broaden your, your imagination a little bit. But as far as it relates to things like electric motors, I think this metaphor and thinking about short and longer wavelengths, low frequency creating a longer wavelength, higher frequency creating a shorter wavelength, and also thinking about it in terms of a rotational, in the case of electricity, motors, things like that. And then we just represent that on a timeline, and that's why it looks like a sine wave. That to me makes a lot more sense and kind of nails that down in my head. Of course, from a practical standpoint, there's a lot more things we would need to talk about. But just to sort of imagine what you're seeing when you're looking at a sine wave, whether this sine wave represents voltage or amperage, no matter what it represents, it just makes sense that it's going up and down because it's being generated circularly, you know, again, like the two kids jumping rope. So there you go. There is some frequency basics. Hopefully you find that helpful. And thank you for watching all of our videos. We'll see you next time.